everybody welcome to the channel today is a special video because I have a very special guest and that is my husband <laughs> very special guest. anyway it's really hard to book me so today I'm gonna interview him but unfortunately you can't see him because my subscriber count is still at 3,000 and he he said that he will only appear in my channel when I reach 1 million subscribers. Because by then we'll have fuck you money. <laughs> well anyway, so let's start the interview. Okay, Paul, um, why did you um, marry a Filipina? Because Western women are trashy. When you have a... Uh, what is it? 80%? I'm sorry, 79%. Okay. 79% of all divorces in America are initiated by the female. Uh-huh. And that says it all. Okay. Then my follow-up question would be, out of all the women in, in the world, why Filipino? Well, I mean, the, the, the traditional, obviously honor raise better honor their values not some Christian gray here in America now the rule is if you want her to stay that way you stay in the Philippines you keep her there okay I brought you over here because I make money over here and um, I know this is gonna come as a shocker to most people who just assume oh well, the, she's in there for the money no <laughs> you make just as much as I do which is a really nice chunk of change. So, no, you're not a gold digger. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Transactional. Okay. What can you say about being married to a Filipina then? Do you recommend it to other women? I mean, other men who are considering of marrying uh, women outside the United States? Well, it's like any other marriage in Western society. You're playing with snakes. Okay. Women have every incentive to go home with all the cash and prizes. Uh huh. Get their, um, stay married just long enough so they can collect alimony or pussy bomb you and then get the get the baby and then leave you and collect the collect the alimony or I mean the uh, baby payments. Uh huh. Baby jail. <laughs> so yeah, there's. There is a high degree of risk, and if you want my official answer, no. Do not get married. Get a damn doll. Then why did you get married? I wanted kids. Okay. And that was my focus. And you can't have children with a doll. I had explored um, a surrogate. Uh -huh. And a lot of people do go that route. Yeah. But, A, it's costly, and B, I, I wanted a mother to raise my children. Okay. So, and you're a good mother. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, we met at FilipinoCupid.com. How did you come to know of that website? And do you recommend that to other men? Yeah, I recommend that website. Um, there's tons of websites out there. This was the one that had, I think, the best um, general services for free. I didn't have a paid account, but I was just, I initially had a, a free account. I was just kind of browsing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the um, then I decided to go with the full service premium account. I think it was only like 180 bucks a year or something. Okay. Or maybe that was for three years. I don't remember now. If there's one tip that you can give to men who are in the dating website, what would it be? Um, you're gonna have a lot of fish jumping in the boat. Yeah. So, as a fisherman, you're probably gonna be overwhelmed with all these fish that are just gonna be hitting you up and messaging you and everything. Don't, don't, the prettiest girls, those are the ones that already have two or three kids mm -hmm. the majority of the overwhelmingly beautiful women it's because they already have kids mm -hmm. 
So um, don't fall for it. So are why you raise another man's children? So are you saying that to land a high quality woman in the dating site, don't go for the super gorgeous. Superficial, yeah. You're just gonna end up miserable and stupid. I, I, um, me and Arlene, we spent six months online in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And and the majority of it was live video feeds where every waking moment of our days were together. And yeah, there was an 18-hour difference, but it was as I was getting up and ready for my day, you were getting ready to close your day and go to bed. So I got to spend, you know, the five or six hours in the, in the evening before your bedtime. And then I, as I was getting off work, that's when you were just getting up and getting ready. So I got to literally witness probably 75% of your life. And you got, to, and vice versa, you got to witness the majority of mine. So we got to see each other's habits, who we hung out with, the kind of people we were around, the way we treated other people, the way people treated us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes at an incredible distance when you're doing uh, LDR. Yeah. If you're not, okay. if you're not watching, not just the girl, but all the people that she's around, how are her coworkers acting? How is her boss? How is her friends? What are her activities at the end of the day? If, if she's a girl, oh, I want to go out drinking and partying and dancing. Like, well, psh, that's your red flags right there, dude. Yeah. You deserve what you get. <laughs> yes. Um, what would be your, I mean, there's a lot of people that say that Filipinas are gold diggers. I mean, what's your stand on that? Well, I mean, <laughs> if she's self-sufficient and capable and has her own career, then I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say that she's not gold digging. She's capable of working and earning her money herself, just like you are. Mm -hmm. But if she's... She just, all she can do is put on makeup and look pretty and, and I want to go, 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 go and party, party. And like, well, then, yeah, <laughs> you've got a low quality woman. If you're, you're the one who's having a conversation with her. If, if, if it's just superficial, and, oh, she's just gorgeous to look at, like, and, but she's shallow yeah. and there's no depth to her. Yeah. Then you, you deserve what you get, dude. <laughs> right. Um... So I shared on my channel that after roughly two months from meeting you online, you surprised me at my workplace. Like you flew to the Philippines and visited me there. Uh -huh. um, what made you so confident to do that? Because prior to that, we were spending probably 12 to 16 hours a day live with each other. I mean, you were plowing through your loads. Yeah. Buying loads constantly, constantly pumping money. In. I, I didn't realize how much you were spending on your loads. And guess what? I did not ask a dime <laughs> from him. Well, and that was, that was another thing. It was like, because a lot of people, the, the, the girl will bring up, you know, can you bring me, send me money or I need to, or, or better yet, they won't ask you directly for money, but they'll send you a sob story of my aunt this, or my mom and dad that, or my brother needs something or other. All right. Okay. So anyway, so you're saying that because, so you're saying because we spend a lot of time I had chatting. No, uh, yeah. So that's, so you were confident that if you're going to surprise me it was gonna work well yeah okay because I asked this because there's a lot of people asking me like how will you know that she's gonna be happy to see me um, in the Philippines or how will you know if she's happy to be in a relationship if you have you? your doubts or reservations that's your gut telling you and that's the smart uh, um, answer go with your gut don't go with your paranoia follow logic and facts and if she's being shifty or shady not wanting to Oh, I gotta go out with my girlfriends. Like, all right, stop right there. Hey, pause this. We gotta pick our order. All right, back to resuming the question. Right, it was okay. How how did I know? Is because in the two months that we dated, long distance, I got to know you better than ninety nine percent of the couples who date face to face know. When you think about it, like, you you you're you're with a, a girl and you see her maybe for a couple hours on the weekends or something. <coughs> Mm -hmm. traditional relationships 
oh, I, I had dinner with my girlfriend and I'm gonna see her again next week. And in between that time, you don't know what she's doing, who she, how many other people she's seeing. You're right. Um, and, and these days, women have an overwhelming majority of access to thirsty men. Mm -hmm. Because they got their cell phone on them and their Instagram feeds and the positive hits and the Facebook and the WhatsApp and all the other dating applications and so oh, what's the one where you swipe left and right? Like, Tinder. Tinder, yeah. So they're not limited to a small pool of men that they meet random though. They have men from hundreds of miles around. Yeah. And they can get dinners 24/7 constantly. All right. Okay. So basically, you, you're saying that I spend more time with you uh -huh. in two months than most people would spend in a year together, easily, okay. because it was every waking moment of our lives was together. Right. Okay. Next question. Being married to your wife. I mean, since we're already married for like almost three years now, I think you're already. I mean, you already have the authority to say. Or to talk about the topic on what to expect when you marry a Filipino. <laughs> so, what to expect? Everything, what? everything that they already put on every other YouTube channel of what to expect. <laughs> I mean, I got great cooking until you got pregnant and then it just fell off a cliff. <laughs> now, rarely I, I uh, get a meal cooked for me. Mm -hmm. On the plus side, you do pull a six-figure salary and so do I. So... We eat out a lot. And but now we're that, not restricted on. But uh, now that we have a grill too, it's so easy I do because a lot we of just for you. we just put the food in the smoker and then come back an hour or two later. Yeah. That's all. That's all me. That's none of you. You've done like maybe one or two pork kebabs in that time. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. So, and then um. So I don't care. I didn't marry you for cooking. <laughs> I didn't marry you for your looks. Uh -huh. I married you for that I thought you would be a g good, compatible person with me and we could raise a family together and be happy together. Right. And if you want to call that for companionship, uh, no, I wanted a good mother for my children and I saw that in you. I saw that in the way people treated you. I saw that in the way you treated people. I saw that in your morality and your lifestyle that I could be at ease knowing that I had a good, honest, faithful woman with me mm -hmm. and not some girl whose Instagram feed post says, dancing is my fashion. I mean, what a dumb box of rocks. What was that? <laughs> anyway, all right. So, okay. So when you were at the dating site, were you expecting to land a woman who has never dated a man before? I had never heard of that concept. I was expecting no hymen, no diamond, and I was expecting no children because that's where my line in the sand was. Uh -huh. But um, I was, I was prepared and accepting and willing. Like, yeah, she had a boyfriend. No, fine, you know, not a. That's not a deal breaker. What's what a deal breaker for me was was she um, promiscuous, mm -hmm. and especially did she have other kids? Because I see so many. A lot of the prettiest girls out there, they were also the ones that had kids. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not raising another man's children. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's called being a cuck. Yeah, and to those men who are doing that, you do you. you if do, you're happy. Yeah, whatever, do, do yeah. yourself. I just think you're um, a sad loser. <laughs> your, your standards are so pathetic and weak that you're willing to raise another man's children. Don't give me that one well, real man. No. A real man wouldn't raise somebody else's children. Period. Well, you're just insecure, but oh, I am so secure with myself that that's why I have my standards, and I'm willing to stick to my standards. Okay. So, yeah, um, I think this interview is getting so long now, and we're almost, almost home. Time. So, I think we're gonna end this um, interview. Right here. Are you gonna edit my language? But before, but before we end the interview, do you have one last message to men who are um, considering of marrying a Filipina? Hey, you know what? Make a list of what you want in your criteria, 
and you are worth it. Unless you're on your second or third wife or something, then it's like, uh, yeah, maybe the problem is with you. You need to assess yourself. Yeah, and not so much the uh, multiple women that you're blaming for your failures. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're on wife number three and you're looking for a fourth one, like, I think it's a you problem and not so much a, a past wives problem. Yeah, So, but still I believe that they still have the chance to start afresh, but still learn from your mistakes from your previous marriages before you start a new one. And <laughs> Any girl who's going to marry somebody who's on his third and fourth wife, like she deserves what she's about to get. <laughs> she hasn't apparently learned the lesson that the other three women learned. Anyway, so yeah, that's it for today guys. If you have questions drop them down below. Thank you so much for watching until next time